everybody. It's that time again. Cheers. If you happen to be uh, watching in the EU or wherever you are, doesn't matter. It's YouTube. Any time of the day will do. How's it going, everybody? So um, this has been an eventful week. Interesting. Navi dropped Starx. Definitely was not expecting that. All of a sudden, Starx find him, finds himself on the bench trying to figure out where to go next and what to do next. And, well, we've already had a discussion about Starx, and I feel like there are plenty of options for him. A player I don't feel like there are plenty of options for is, unfortunately, Pyth or Pith or Pit. I mean, that is one thing, to be fair. We'd be pretty happy, at least in the near future, we aren't going to have to have this discussion every single stream. How do we pronounce his name? How does it actually work? Is it pit? Or however you would say it in Swedish with the Swedish accent, which happens to sound like whore in French. I, I don't know. Um, but that's the big, uh, the big break. The big news is that Nip have chosen to remove Pith or Jacob. We'll do it that way. From the uh, active roster in order to bring in a up-and-coming new talent, Swedish talent, called Draken. And it's a good thing that we actually see Draken because all the talk recently, at least in Scandinavia, has been about how Denmark are constantly churning out top-tier talent in the form of Kirby, in the form of Magisk, in the form of Config. I mean, just beasts, monsters. And where have, you know, where have these, uh, these crazy Swedes been? I mean, we've had Lekro. That was about uh, DreamHack Masters Malmo last year when he really started to, to make some waves. They'd picked him up in FPL. And uh, the kid was monster, right? And so you're thinking, okay, there we go. But it kind of quieted down after that. And, well, you know, you have been kind of wondering where where to next. And it seems like Nip have elected to go ahead and take Draken off of Epsilon and bring him into their active roster in the, in the form of an opter. And so in Nip's statement, they actually made this. And it does feel like this is kind of the direction the team wants to go in. The, it felt like they didn't have an opper. That's always been the thing, right? You know, whether Forrest could actually op or not, whether he wanted to or not. This has been a problem even all the way back to the formation of the roster originally where Fifth, Fifth Lauren, was taking the op because nobody else wanted to. Nobody else would. And so somebody had to op, and it turns out it was going to be Fifth. Then they went on to pick up two different oppers, talented oppers, and went on to have good results with them, Michael Ailey and Alu. And, um, well, I mean, Michael Ailey, that was probably the most explosive a performance there dreamhack uh, winter 2014 crazy crazy what we saw there but again they've tried to bring in offers in the past and it's never really worked out this time they brought in Pyth with Pyth it didn't pan out either because he doesn't want to be a main opera either and so again the team kind of went full circle they went back to square one and wound up with five riflers again and then we're just like well I, g I guess forest will op maybe maybe not I don't know and uh, well, let's just uh, let's get that out of the way. Right. That's that's the main topic here, really, is just the fact that once again, Nip are going to go ahead and keep this four core alive. And this as far as four players staying together, you have Virtus Pro who currently hold the title of longest five man roster staying together in CSGO with unreal like three years and counting, which is unreal. But this core of NIP not only being the real first pro one point six team to really get it get formed around it taking players from 1.6 to really get into csgo and then go on to dominate it in its early stages with that obviously the legendary 87 and 0 record what you need to take into account is that 87 and 0 is when made it was made when there wasn't a whole lot going on there wasn't a lot of competition going on because you had the 1.6 players who were still holding out not wanting to shift over to go source as well and so it was a bit of an awkward spot nip they were able to move in they moved in early and they took over from there but it's just been this struggle for this core and it feels like they want to do a similar they want to have the similar approach to virtus pro right where it's just like we feel like they feel like they have all of the tools necessary to actually be able to get tournaments tournament title wins again they feel like it and they feel like they're probably looking at it and saying well if, you know if vp are capable of doing this and we're going to look at these outliers why aren't we right and I wonder, what is uh, the thing, like, Virtus Pro, the reason why they're capable of doing, of, of playing the way that they are without making roster changes, just constantly evolving, is because, to me, they have two core players that just make that possible for that team. They have crazy firepower in the form of Snacks, Bialy, and Pasha, right? 
Pasha, very straightforward. He wants to play his game. He went away from the AWP. He can go back. He's, he's actually kind of become more of a versatile player because of that. He can go op. He can go rifle. He can play his positions, and he's still able to change it up. The reason why he's able to change it up and get back into a more comfortable role when he feels like it is the fact that he has Neo and Taz. And to me, Neo and Taz are the two linchpins, the keys to Virtus Pro success. Not only do they have the insane firepower in Snacks Bialy, there's no discounting that, right, between the three of them. But then you can still have Neo and Taz to rotate around the map, change up the positions when your other players, your anchor players, right they don't want to play that spot anymore they want to try and change things up they want to get comfortable elsewhere neo or taz they step in they take the hit and it's fine the machine keeps rolling and they're able to continue performing and you don't really see that big of a drop i mean sure neo you don't really count on neo to hard carry vp it happens every now and again where he has crazy clutch plays right you see like that glimmer of the old neo right of this monster but neo's never really reached those heights and he's never really been expected to when you have the likes of pasha etc rolling around right the main thing here with Nip is just the feeling that perhaps they're lacking the, the those versatile players that are capable of of just playing any role, of doing whatever the team needs to do and still maintaining that sharp level or a sharp enough level. It feels like Nip have been changing a lot of positions. They've been changing roles. They've been changing leadership. They've been changing, 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 and it never seems to really stick. And so perhaps they're going back to basics. That's what I wonder about now, really. You know, if you're going to keep the same core – and now you found an opera again. Is the idea to give threat full reign now with all of the tools necessary in a very clear cut kind of way to say that get right, you're gonna lurk. Forest, you know, you're gonna be the second man in. Exist. You and Freiburg will trade off on the entering. And then Draken, you will be the opera. You will be the one looking for picks. Are we going to play a slow style, a fast style? Is Draken going to be able to step up with the rifles? Is he going to be able to step, be versatile and allow for an aggressive, explosive style? Or are you going to try and go back to what has worked for teams in the past but requires a lot of structure and a lot of patience, which is not something that Nip did when they had Alu, for example. If you're going to play around an opera and make the best use out of an opera's strengths, you need to give that opera space room to maneuver with, room to work with. Remember back in the day when it, when you were watching NIP, uh, and uh, it never really felt like they gave Alu time to set up in the round and, and make use of the op when he finally was able to get an op in his hands, for example, right? It was always a lot of just, you know, oh, quick explosive play, but then, you know, Alu shows up, everybody's dead. He's like, oh, great, I've got an op. I'm not Kenny. I'm not going to just, you know, god mode 1v4 everybody and win the round for us, right? Uh, it always felt like that was the issue. Like, they they... They were just like, okay, so we have all of the ingredients, and there's a certain way to make those ingredients work, right? You know, you're going to, I don't know, mix the flour with the salt, and you're going to let it sit for a while and rest, and then you're going to put the eggs in the milk and all that. They actually just take all the ingredients at once and put it all in together and just uh, expect to have, like, this God-tier cake, and th then they wonder why when it's like, we have all the ingredients, but you're not following the proper rules to actually make those ingredients work. Well, then where do you go, right? And that's always how it felt. It always felt kind of like Nip were were struggling to we're struggling to be able to to even like make a basic system work without or with making changes. If you're going to make changes to players' positions and players' roles, then those players have to fully 100% get behind that change, right? There can't be a little voice in the back of their head saying, "Oh, but I would be playing better if I was playing over there." You can't have that, right? It feels that uh, that it feels like Neo, for example, from Virtus Pro. Even Taz, at least when you watch them play, that voice is gone. Like they're just like, oh, this is my role now. I'm going to play CT Alley on train. Really shit spot to play. Really difficult to actually make work because you're exposed to multiple angles. You can get shot from all over the place. It all comes down to timing. It can be really shitty and frustrating to play that spot. But that player is going to take it because that's what the team needs. Boom, done. And it doesn't really seem like there's any hesitation whatsoever. Whereas with Nip, when changes are made, and they seem to constantly happen, right? The player never really seems to be able to just, boom, get into it, right? Like, fit into the machine and get the machine working properly. So, I am a little skeptical when it comes to um, Draken joining the team just because I wonder, are you going to go back from square one? Are you looking for a point that you have been in in the past, say, try and... I mean, I, I, I think looking at the past at this point, if you're going to look at the past, it can't, you cannot do it if you're Nip. You have to just say, right, what, it, what makes you most comfortable? This is something that they brought up in the, in the press release, right, where they said, well, you know, we've changed positions, we've done this, but now, you know, with Draken in, involved, we're going to go ahead and give everybody their old positions back. So it, it does feel like Nip are just trying to basically say, right, get right, where do you want to play? What do you want to do? Okay, right. 
Forrest, what do you want to play? What do you want to do? Right. Okay, good. That fits. That Those fit, two fit together. Freiburg, entry, we hope. Okay, that fits in there. Exist, right? You know, and, and they're just going to go down the line, and then they're just going to have Draken with the op. And where he fits into the picture is what I'm wondering. And when are Nip going to have a boot camp? When are Nip going to be able to... I mean, that, granted, they have time. They have time to uh, to kind of fully focus on this change and figure out a system. And if threat is going to be involved, if he isn't off herring about taking care of university, not being able to focus 100% on the game and on the team, I, th I think that's another drawback, right, where there has been change in that sense. You saw a nip that put a lot of time into refining a system around threat as in-game leader as a coach, and then the changes happened. All of a sudden, threat not going to be able to be as involved nip or one of those teams that work that were like navi that were caught out and that definitely struggled i think uh with the valve coach ruling because they've, they'd spent a lot of time really putting threat in a position where he's going to be able to call he's going to be able to set strats up he's going to be able to help the team and be active right in the rounds and all of a sudden that was gone and you had to go back to square one again with exist and you had to go back to a system that you didn't want so you sp you basically spent all this time trying to reinvent yourself only to get your legs cut out and have to start over again with um with obviously you know a, a team of individuals who aren't feeling comfortable with what it is that they're doing and don't necessarily even maybe want to go back to what was working before maybe you know you were making changes but you just you lost the ability to, to uh to keep going down that route because of perhaps threat you know because he isn't able to interact so much in the round itself maybe that was the big uh, the big turnoff there this is this is a lot of speculation but it's a lot of just kind of looking in the looking in from the outside just because you have to wonder. I mean, the team is sticking together, it seems like. That is going to be the goal, right? It doesn't feel like, even with perhaps the, uh, you know, with slumps, it really does feel like, to, if, you know, they're looking at VP, they're like, well, if they can do it, we can do it, right? And so, well, it wasn't easy for Virtus Pro. Certainly it wasn't. But you're going to need somebody, you're going to need some of that old get right or some of that old forest if you're like the heavy firepower or the exist, right? But you're going to have to, okay, this is, you know, you're, you have to basically give them all of their roles back and hope that they are clever enough to make the changes necessary to adapt to the meta today. If you're, if you're going back to a position that you played, I don't know, let's throw it like a year ago, right? You can't go back to playing it the way it was played a year ago because you're going to get wrecked. And so now you have to account for, okay, you're going to get your spots back, but you have to know how to play those spots where it's going to be effective in today's meta and how the game is played today, approached today. That's, you, know, you, can, you can have all sorts of old, old positions and everything, but if you're approaching it the same way, I mean, this sounds obvious, but it's going to be a tricky thing because you're going to have to do a lot of learning on the fly as far as, you know, in prac, okay, I play it this way, right, that didn't work, where do I go next? And all that has to be intuitive, all that has to be figured out for them to be able to get comfortable again, I suppose, and to be able to count on the heavy hitters in Get Right and Forest in Exist and hopefully in Draken. I mean, you're giving the guy a $4,750 rifle. You better hope that you're going to get something out of him. If Draken can just... This, I, mean, I feel like we had this argument already. When Pyth was... when, when That was the difference between Michael Ayla and Pyth. You know, Pyth was just, like, consistent. And that's nothing wrong. It's nothing bad about that. Pyth, you could just kind of put him in a spot and count on him doing work. And he would have some flashy plays every now and again. But, you know, you could really kind of just, like, okay, you're going to get us a kill every other round or so, maybe two, right? You know, and that's that's good. We can work with that, right? Whereas Michael Ayla, this was always the thing. This was always an old argument, right? Like, Michael Ayla would just take over a round or just take over a map. And then it would just be like, right, okay, Nip kind of just like riding, riding his coattails to victory, right? Because that guy could be a monster sometimes. He could win key rounds that would turn it for Nip and just in, and in such a way that it just broke their opponents and you could really see something there. So it seems like you're going to go back to more of the, the more conservative method here with Draken. Because keep in mind, Draken, uh, young and experienced, only been really competing for, what, a year now? And that was just to try and qualify for MLG Columbus last year. And now he's been playing on Epsilon, playing against the likes of LDLC, led by Existence. You know, like that, the, the tier, two, tier two teams, basically. You know, now you're expecting this guy to show up to play amongst legends. Guys who are going to be set in their ways. And not only that, who are feeling insecure right now. Who don't necessarily know what works for them what and what they need to do. And so they're going to be feeling frustrated. They're not going to be feeling that confidence. You're... you're 
you're coming into a really, I mean, it's like, it's kind of like Sixer and Envy where, <laughs> you know, you're coming into a roster. It's like, well, about that. You're expecting, or, or you know, what, Stewie and Cloud9, right? You know, like, oh, yeah, you're coming into this roster. There's a lot of guys with a lot of experience. You know, are, are you going to be able to learn from them? I just don't know if Nipa are in a position right now where you've got the players. They're trying to learn themselves. They're trying to figure out what they need to do. Are they going to be able to come in and actually get this guy up to speed, get him the experience necessary so that he will be effective with such an expensive rifle, with such, with such an investment, not feel the pressure that the team are making that investment in him and allow him to, to actually have his picks. They're going to have to put him in very safe positions so that he can get his kills and get confidence from that. And then that will allow him to start taking bigger risks, start trying to make bigger plays. I think that's going to be the key at the end is really you're going to have to just put a lot on this guy to just make it very comfortable for him to ease him in. But the only problem I see with that is just the fact that when the rest of the roster are, are lacking confidence and aren't sure of what they are doing, right? It's not like Phelps is moving into SK. SK know what the fuck they're on about, right? Fallen, cold, taco, like they know what they want to do. Maybe maybe a little shaky, but that's just adjustment. When you've got the firepower, like some fallen and cold, well, not even fallen really, but when you have cold, I mean, it's like VP and snacks. You know, when you've got a guy like that who's going to keep your team in the in the rounds, in the half, while the, while the rest of the team figure out what the fuck they need to do, you're good, right? You're in a decent spot. So you can afford to take a player with less experience and bring him into the into the model, set it up so that he starts feeling confident and comfortable, and then go from there and progress as a unit, right? They did the same thing with Fox. Fox was Fox actually played pretty well when he was with SK as that stand in in that stand in mode, right? He actually did a pretty good job. So I mean, but that's because he has a really solid, confident system to fall into, right? To work with. With Nip, you just don't really see that confidence at all. So it, was this the right move? Wasn't it? Is, is a more drastic move necessary? Was a more drastic move even possible? That's the other question, right? It's like, oh, yeah, you're going to drop players. But it's like, okay, but w where are you going to get your replacements from, right? Do, does Nip the org have the means to go to Fnatic and buy half of the roster from there? Convince Olaf Meister, for example, to, go, to come off a of Fnatic and come play for NIP along with Force and Get Right? Or, right? Where, where are you going to go to get that, that talent? Or is it going to be godsend? Are you going to go and pillage Pronax's roster again? Pronax really starting to feel like he's a farm team over there, you know? But th those are your options, right? So it does feel like Nip feel like or believe that their best chances are in their best chances to stay together and try and maintain. And well, we'll see how that goes. I'm not super confident in it, but then. It's more of a situation where it is there, and I know we keep saying it. We sound like a broken record, right? You know, like, well, look at the quality of the players that have been there. You know, like, these are legendary names. These are some of the highest impact players the game has seen. They should be able to find that again, right? Yes, but it's going to be so hard to find the confidence. How you make those impact plays is when you think you're God and you know it, you're, you know it in your head that you are unstoppable. You're this killing machine that is going to wreck everything in front of you. That's confidence. And when you lack that confidence, it's so hard to get back up there, right? You have that killer instinct that's in you. And if you're lacking that killer instinct, whew, hang on. So we'll see. New roster, one player added, one player benched. And uh, not the most comfortable position for Draken either because I can imagine Pyth is still on the roster. It's not like he's been traded. There's no finality here, right, where it's just like this is the five-man roster for NIP now. It's going to be Draken. We're sticking with you. We trust you. We, we're confident in your abilities. It's on you, bro. We got you, right? It's not even like that. Pyth is still in the roster. And so Draken, he's got a lot riding on him. He's going to be playing with uh, guys who are basically people who's looked up to his entire career. And he's, he's going to be expected to kind of like at least get up to that level fairly quickly. And he's still got a guy waiting behind him. So if he fucks up, oh, sorry, we bring in Pyth now. We bring Pyth back. It didn't work. It was an experiment. Sorry, Epsilon. Sorry, Draken. You know, it's, it could happen. So unless Nip get rid of Pyth and just trade his contract away, sell his contract, and it, they, they are fully you know, committed to this five-man roster, there's even going to be that little edge behind his head where he's just like, I could, I could be the one on the bench. You know, if it doesn't work out within the next two to three weeks, month, right? Next land, basically. I could be the one on the bench, and Pyth could be back into the active roster. That could be a thing, but that would be, uh, that would be pretty grim. All right, catch you guys next time.